A common misconception is that sharks are an incredibly ancient and primitive group of animals that have hardly changed in the hundreds of millions of years they've been around for. While it's true that sharks are a very old superorder, originating long before the dinosaurs first appeared, they are certainly not primitive animals that haven't been changed over their evolutionary history. Sharks have undergone multiple immense radiations of biodiversity, experimenting with some very unusual looking body plans in the past, ultimately leading to the current, modern day variety of these incredible animals. Sharks, like most organisms, have had a dynamic and remarkable evolutionary history as they've been forced to adapt to an ever-changing world and find their own niches. However, there's a particular order of sharks alive today that could perhaps give us a glimpse of what these animals used to look like back in the depths of deep time, as various features of these fish appear to be very similar to fossils known from millions and millions of years ago. These are the hexanchiforms, an incredible grouping that includes the frilled sharks and the cow sharks. This is not a very diverse clade of these fish, with only seven species alive today and just four different genera, but they are still incredibly fascinating organisms nevertheless, and research on these animals is revealing all sorts about them, with new species being discovered as recently as 2018. Within the order Hexanchiforms, there are two families, Hexanchidae, the cow sharks, and Chlamydosalacidae, the frilled sharks. Cow sharks are the more diverse of the two families, and include the six gill and seven gill sharks. As the name suggests, these sharks are unique in possessing one or two extra pairs of gill slits compared to the five gill slits present in every other species of shark, except for one kind of saw shark, which also has six pairs but is unrelated. Not a lot is actually known about most of these sharks due to the fact that many of them inhabit very deep, cold parts of the ocean. However, they are known to sometimes approach closer to the surface, allowing scientists to learn more about them, and some species do live in shallower environments. The largest of the cow sharks is the blunt-nosed six-gill shark, reaching about 4.8 meters in total length, while the smallest, the sharp-nosed seven-gill shark, is only around 1.4 meters long when fully grown. The anatomy of these sharks is fascinating and appears to be reminiscent of a fairly ancient body plan for the group, with only a single dorsal fin present and placed very far back along the body, unlike the two dorsals present in every other shark group. Their teeth are also very unique, with those in the lower jaw being comb-like in shape. The broad-nosed seven-gill shark is useful in the study of these animals since it actually inhabits much shallower coastal waters, and is therefore even able to be kept in aquariums. This species is capable of growing to about three meters in length and will feed on a huge variety of food sources, including all kinds of fish, even other sharks, octopuses, pinnipeds, and sometimes dolphins, with these animals actually known to hunt cooperatively together to take out seals. Further illustrating how incredible these animals are is the fact that new species of cow sharks are still being discovered as recently as 2018. Research published that year compared the base pairs of mitochondrial genes between populations of the Big Eye Six-Gill Shark in the Atlantic Ocean and in the Indian and Pacific Oceans, finding that the genetic distance between them was enough to confirm that the Atlantic population was actually a different species, now known as the Atlantic Six-Gill Shark. The mysterious habits and preferred environments of these animals understandably makes the study of these organisms a challenging task, and clearly they still have secrets for us to uncover. But the cow sharks in the family Hexanchidae are, as I explained, only one of the two families within this order. What about Chlamydosalacidae, the frilled sharks? Well, this is another group lacking in modern diversity, with only two living species, but they're still incredibly fascinating organisms. Frilled sharks are known for their very elongate, almost eel-like body shapes, as well as the reason for their name, with gill slits that have the appearance of very frilly edges caused by the extension of the ends of the gill filaments themselves. Additionally, the first of the gill slits is actually completely continuous all the way across the throat of the shark, giving the appearance of the animal possessing a kind of collar. Like the cow sharks, they also only have a single dorsal fin. These animals generally live at great depths in the ocean, and an interesting aspect of their biology is that they possibly have the longest gestation period of any known vertebrate, at potentially three and a half years, which is pretty incredible. Like the cow sharks, frilled sharks are oviviviparous, meaning the eggs are held inside the mother's body until the young hatch. These are also another kind of shark that are still revealing their secrets to us in recent times as the second living species was only named and described in 2009, based on specimens collected around southern Africa. Now, the classification and relationships of the frilled sharks in respect to the cow sharks is a bit of a debated topic, but it's important to quickly mention it. Frilled sharks have been classified in all sorts of different places within the shark evolutionary tree since they were first discovered, but today it's generally accepted that they are members of the hexanchiforms. However, some researchers have proposed that they should in fact be classified as their own order of sharks, which would be known as chlamydosalacaforms. But evidence from analyses of the frilled shark genome do seem to support their inclusion within the hexanchiform order. 
The evolutionary history of the hexanchiform sharks is another fascinating area of study that has undergone quite a bit of revision over the years, with the frilled sharks actually being considered to be surviving remnants of a very ancient Devonian age lineage of sharks by certain paleontologists in the 19th century. Other scientists from around this time also considered the frilled sharks to represent a modern continuation of prehistoric lineages from the Paleozoic and the early Mesozoic, because certain parts of their anatomy, specifically their teeth, look quite similar to these prehistoric sharks. But it now seems clear that the frilled shark lineage actually appeared during the late Cretaceous, based on their fossil record which includes a lot of different extinct species. That's still over 80 million years ago, but it's not quite as ancient as the original hypotheses about them being relict Devonian sharks suggested. The cow sharks similarly have a relatively well represented fossil record with many different extinct species known, and while the oldest undisputed remains of these sharks date to the Jurassic, there's actually a single tooth from Upper Permian deposits in Japan that looks very much like it came from a cow shark, hinting at perhaps a much older origin for these animals. A more ancient origin is further hinted at by a paper that describes a potential Devonian example of the hexanchiforms, though it would be in a different family to the cow sharks and frilled sharks, but still related. This evidence comes in the form of teeth recovered from early to mid-Devonian rocks of Australia, assigned to a genus called Mukmadodus. The classification of this taxon is not entirely certain, but the shape of the ancient shark's teeth was found to look very similar to those of the hexanchiforms, resulting in Mukmadodus and the family it's placed in, Mukmadodontidae, tentatively being placed within the order. Incredibly, if McMurdodus really is a member of the Hexanchiforms, it means that this order of shark is extremely ancient, existing since the early or mid-Devonian, and therefore being the only order of living shark to have been around since the Paleozoic, with all the other orders originating in the Jurassic. That also means they made it through the end Permian extinction, or Great Dying, the worst mass extinction in the history of life, which is pretty impressive. Additionally, a significant ghost lineage, when a group of organisms disappears and then reappears in the fossil record, would exist for these sharks from the Devonian through to the Jurassic, when the first undeniable hexanchiforms are found. Other suggestions have been made for the similarities between the McMurdodus and modern hexanchiform teeth though, including that it's just a case of convergent evolution. But it is a fascinating idea to think that these still living sharks could potentially have an evolutionary legacy stretching this far back in deep time. Hopefully, more research will be done on the evolutionary history of these fascinating organisms in the future, and a clearer picture of their evolution can be determined. They're still undoubtedly an incredible branch of sharks that deserve more attention and appreciation, and the study of these animals is bound to result in some amazing discoveries about the history of sharks as a whole. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and learning about this remarkable group of sharks. A big thank you to our Patreon supporters too, especially our Dinosaur Tier supporters Amanda Von Nordek, Archianthus, Bella Anderson, Elijah Carrion, George Fodgetek, Greg Silvernail, Just F. Max, Corey Peterson, Laura Sanborn, Mayer's World, Mike Pace, Persian Boy, Staniforth Hopkins, and Tiffany Trammell. If you would like to find out more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you would like to see more from us.